What a beautiful day to come um, and celebrate a life. I think about the words of Robert Kierhold, who uh, was a Lutheran minister out in California. He wrote a book entitled Learning to Die, Learning to Live. He said, death is the final separation from all that we have worked for and that we have built up, all that is near and dear to us. It is too bad that dying is the last thing we do because it could teach us so much about living and how true that is. We don't like to think about death, but death is a part of life and it helps us when we think about death to know how to live. The psalmist wrote in Psalm 39 verses 4 through 7, Lord, make me to know my end and what is the measure of my days that I may know how frail I am. Indeed, you have made my days as handbreadth, and my age as is nothing before you. Certainly every man at his best state is but vapor. Surely every man walks about like a shadow. Surely they busy themselves in vain. He heaps up riches and does not know who will gather them. And now, Lord, what do I wait for? My hope is in you. I want us to think just a few moments about life and death and what it can teach us today as we think about Claudine's life. We find that, first of all, that we may need to make the most of every day. Uh, happiness is all around us. And for Claudine, in the last days of her life, she found happiness in the personal care home. Uh, Shelby told me that she they go and visit and she was satisfied she said she got three meals a day to be able to eat and uh, you know we need to just stop and think about every day the happiness that is all around us Grantland Rice wrote don't hurry don't worry and don't forget to stop and smell the roses and how important it is for you see life is to be sipped not gulped so many times we're in such a hurry to get through our activities that we miss what it means to know uh, life and the fullness of life. Claudine knew that in her life and the joy of knowing that she could uh, trust the Lord and her life made a difference. But secondly, we find that there's futility in possessions. The psalmist said there in verse 6, Surely every man walks around as a shadow. He heaps up riches and someone else gathers them. Billy Graham always said, never saw a hearse pulling a U-Haul trailer. You don't get to take it out of this world, but you get to send it ahead. And those things that we do here and now in this life, we are laying up treasure in heaven, uh, not here on earth. I love the quote of Jim Elliott, who was a missionary who was killed while he was trying to share the gospel with the Alka Indians. He said, a man is no fool who gives what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. And how true that is. Uh, there's the futility of possessions. You know, we can't control the length of our life, but we can control the depth and the width. And so how important it is to know each day how we can make a difference in this life with others. And then thirdly, there is our hope that is in God. And he says there in Psalm 39, verse 7, And now, Lord, we wait for thee. My hope is in you. And for Claudine, her hope was in the Lord, knowing that he would take care of her eternal needs. I love the words of Jesus as he came to the grave of Lazarus. The Bible says in John chapter 11, verse 35, one of the shortest verses in all the Bible simply says, Jesus wept. Where did he weep? He wept at the grave of his dear friend Lazarus. Mary and Martha had jumped on him and said, why didn't you come earlier? You could have saved our brother. Oh, but Jesus said, if you believe in me, then he will live again. I love the words that Jesus said in John 11, verse 25. 
He told Mary, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? For Jesus, he stood at the grave of his friend Lazarus. And the humanity of Jesus came out. The humanity of us comes out when we come to a grave like this. We are sorrowful because of the loss. But all to know that Jesus is the resurrection and life. We don't have to worry about the Claudine run into a wall. We can know that she could go through that door of Jesus Christ. And that Jesus provided for all of the eternal needs that she has. Oh, he provides for us today also those eternal needs. And he takes care of every part of our life, whether it's today, tomorrow, or eternity. We can trust in him. Jesus came in a simple way, wept at the grave of his friend to let us know that he knows what we feel in these times. He knows what we experience. He knows what we're going through. Oh, and for Claudine, she is no longer suffering, no longer in pain and agony. She made those decisions ahead uh, in telling the doctors her directives that she wanted. And so we can know that she was satisfied and today we can come and know that all that human hands could do has been done. And how Shelby and Ron looked out for her in those last few days. And all that could be done was done for her. We come today to thank the Lord for a life lived among us. And that we could learn from to not run through life, but experience the joy each day of the Lord. To know that riches in this life are for futility. And that we can trust in the Lord with our eternal salvation. Let's pray together. Father, we are thankful today that we can come and find assurance in your word. That we can come and trust you. Lord, as Claudine trusted you. Lord, we can trust you for our eternal needs and knowing that you provide for us. Lord, may we learn today that life is short and riches are worthless. But Lord, we can lay up treasure in heaven ahead. Father, we thank you today for your amazing grace that that grace that will sustain us in the days to come, that grace that will hold us today is that same grace that will see us home. And so, Lord, I pray that we might trust you with all that we are to all that you are. For I pray it in Jesus' name.
family, I want to tell you today I'm honored to stand here a little bit. Shelby, yeah, you nailed it. It's only in a time like this when we see each other. But uh, I'm honored to be here today. And uh, Brother Paul, I'm honored to serve with him. Y'all know how much I love you. Uh, I truly hurt with you today, Shelby and Ronnie and the entire family. Because I do know the death of a loved one hurts. It's tough. It's tough. Y'all remember my brother passing away just a few years back? Uh, I, 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 it's tough, and I, I and I hurt with you. I admit today I don't have all the answers. I don't like to get around nobody who does either, because we do not have all the answers. But God said He'll be our refuge and our strength and our help. Shelby, you shared some of me just the other morning that touched my heart. Uh, you shared to me that uh, Claudine needed a blanket, and you was kind of tizzy. Y'all know how we get. And uh, you was kind of running around looking for a blanket because she was poor. But you know, right after that, a, lady, a, a fellow walked up to Shelby and said, Can I help you with something? She says, My sister needs a blanket. And he was the chaplain. And I told Shelby, I said, Chip, he's the only time God. There's no sirens in heaven. He'll give us comfort and strength. Matter of fact, he told us, I'll be your refuge in times like this right here. I know this is not easy, but he said, I'll be your refuge. Claudine had a tough time, and I know that. You know that. But he was her strength and her help, and I'm sure that she leaned on him. I'm so glad that Claudine knew Jesus Christ as her personal Savior. She settled out years and years ago at Hill Street Baptist Church. Now, she was not perfect. You know, I didn't spend a lot of time with Claudine. I spent a lot of time with Shelby. And Shelby will tell you the first. Me and Brother Paul, that's not perfect. We are not perfect. And especially him. He, he's a long shot from perfect preacher. But you know what? Claudine wasn't either. She wasn't perfect. But I, I am proud today that I can truthfully say that she accepted the Lord. Shelby, we talked about that. She is with the Lord, and I'm proud of that. She knew what hard times were. I, no doubt about it. She knew what tough times were. She uh, she loved her family. And Shelby, again, I, I want to honor you and Ronnie for the great job y'all did watching. Everybody needs something. Everybody needs. We act like we're an island, but we're not. We need each other. And she knew y'all would be there for her. And she knew that. Uh, very friendly. What I remember of Claudine, she was very friendly. I appreciate that, and I'm so glad today that even on a day like today, we still have that Christian hope. What is the Christian hope? I'm going to tell you what the Christian hope is. That one of these days, and it won't be long, our day, we're going to see our saved love us who's gone on to be with the Lord, and we're going to be with the Lord ourselves. That is our hope. We have that hope. That's why 1 Thessalonians says, I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them, them which are asleep, that you sorrow not even as others which have no hope. Our hope is in Jesus Christ. I get excited, preacher, when I think of heaven. Can you imagine? No pain. No pain. You see, I, can, I don't have to have glasses. I can walk good. I can think straight. Most of the time I have a problem with thinking. Don't make me in that, preacher. But I can, I mean, I'm just, I'll be, I'll be fine. Then. That's heaven. Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. Neither has man imagined in his heart the things God has in store for those who love him. And that's you and that's me. If you know Christ, it's all because, all because of what Christ has done for us. Claudine wasn't perfect. She, she wasn't perfect. But she had taken time in her life to accept Christ as her personal Savior. And the Bible says, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his sons. Precious in the sight of the Lord. You know, everybody has this version about when you first die. Shelby, when you first, the first seconds, you die. What's going to happen? I, I believe it like this, y'all, okay? I believe the first thing you do is bow in front of Christ. I believe that. Claudine bowed in front of Christ. And he said, I'll wipe your tears away. He'll dry all your tears away. You say, well, Brother Gerald, what tears are those? All the tears that you ever cried, he dries them away that day. He dries them all away. He said that. And then... I think right after that, he introduced her again to her family who went on to be with the Lord. Can you imagine?
Can you imagine Mr. Mercedes? She was a sweetie. I can tell you that. Can you imagine that? You say, well, Brother Jerry, do you really believe y'all listen to me? Had I not believed that, I'd never showed up at this place. Our hope is in Jesus Christ. Her brother, Charles, can you imagine seeing her brother? Can you imagine seeing her husband, Thomas? Yo, I'm married. I'm married. And something were to happen to my wife or me, or me, me vice versa, we're looking forward to getting back together again. That's a glad reunion day, and I'm so proud that Jesus Christ has provided that. The fact is, Pauline is more alive than she's ever been. She's not here. She is not here. She, ever, she's not struggling anymore. She don't have to have a bunch. God took care of her. God took care of her. No doubt about it. It's all because of what Christ has done. We all need to settle that issue today, and I hope that you have, that one day we're going to die. Just as sure as you're sitting here, if the Lord don't come back, you're going to die one day. I am too. You need to settle that issue so you know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Life is short. The preacher read it a while ago. It, life is so short. Can you imagine, though, heaven? The tragedy today would be that you, that you never see God in again. Oh, we're going to see her again. Those who are saved, we're going to see her again. In verse 18, this says, Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Those words are comforting to me. Christ is our only, only hope. And I'm proud Christ is our only hope. I'm proud he is. And family, I want to tell you in closing, I love you. I always have. I always will. She helped you put up with me for years when I tried to do the music. And I did say try. Thank you. I tried to do the music. And I love Brother Paul. And I love Hill Street Baptist Church. I raised my children there. And uh, one of these days, the Lord sees me. And I might even get, get back over there. I don't know. The Lord's in charge. But Christ is our only hope. Family, I love you. Thank you again for this high honor that you've given me to stand here just a little bit. Just remember one thing. Claudine is more alive now than she's ever been. And it's not because of what she's done. It's because of what Jesus Christ has done. Let me pray for you. God, thank you for this hope that we have today, Lord. That one of these days we'll see our saved loved ones who's gone to be with Lord, if there's one here today that does not know your person as their personal Savior, Lord, but let, let it be today, God, they just say, I'm sorry. Jesus, forgive me of my sin. Come into my heart and save me. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. And let them find them a church, Lord, and serve you to the day you call them home. God, I'd ask you to be with Shelby and Ronnie and the entire family. Comfort them. You are the God of all comfort. I know that, God. You're the God of all comfort. And God, at the end of every day, we'll give you all the honor. We'll give you all the glory, and we'll give you all the praise. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen.